Now, to Tyler Perry's credit, Tyler Perry called us up, right? And he said, I can see the pain in you and I can hear it. And I want to let you know that I, I, I would never do nothing to hurt you. But the conversation kept going on only for Tyler Perry to admit he did start a rumor that I was difficult to work with. He lied only for Tyler Perry to admit I was wrong. And when my movie Boo come out, I'm going to say that. Right now, here's where. When you did that interview with Kat, I could respect how you do it. Because Kat said, you let them people lie in your face. And your response was, Kat, I don't know if they're lying or not. Right. Because I can only take them at their word. At their word. Right? Yes. Well, we sent you the audio mm -hmm. of Tyler Perry. Mm -hmm. I don't want you to take me at my word. I want you to hear his word. And what did you hear that man saying? What did you hear that man saying? He said it. What did he say? Is that is Moni, you know you're not supposed to be recording people. N no, no. No, no. Let me back up. Okay. Everything we did was legal. And here's where a black woman really gets the kick in the ass. Had I not recorded Tyler Perry, then it would have been my word, word against, his. against his. And then on top of that, it would have been he's so powerful, we can't even pay no attention to that. Right. Well, now I have him on audio, which is legal to do mm -hmm. where we live. Right. Enjoy. OK, mm -hmm. we have him on audio. And do you know what some people then said? Why would you record him? <laughs> Just like you sat there and said, you know what's unlegal to do. But did you hear what the man said? I, I violated you. Yeah. I mistreated you. Yeah. Do you know, Shannon, that's cost my family tens of millions of dollars? Yeah. Over a lie and a rumor? Is he going to is he going to make a he's going to compensate you for that? I want you to look in your camera. Yes. And I want you to talk to Tyler Perry because you heard what that man said. Mm -hmm. So ask him, will he compensate my family for that? Tyler, will you come on Club Shay Shay and let's have a conversation about the fair compensation? for what transpired between you and Monique. You can sit right here and she's sitting right here and you and I can have a conversation. And we'll do you one better. And give me five on that, baby. We'll do you one better, Shay. My husband and I'll sit right next to him. See, with this whole situation and some of the people that Kat talked about, ironically, I have this issues with those same people. There were people that reached out to Tyler Perry on my behalf. Okay. And I was grateful for that. Okay. There was Al Sharpton, the Reverend Al Sharpton, civil rights leader. Yeah. I sent him that audio. He listened to it. He said, baby, what that man did to you was wrong and you're like my daughter and we're going to have to get him to fix that. Right. We didn't hear from Al Sharpton for six months. The next time we saw Al Sharpton, he was on a podium talking about we don't need to fly commercial because we can fly Tyler Perry's private jet. I said, that's why maybe I'm not hearing back from him. OK, then we had our beautiful sister, Stephanie Mills. Yes. OK, who is she don't play. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. I told her what happened, sent her the audio. Now, I don't know if she listened to that audio or not, but however, she called Tyler Perry. She said, Monique, Tyler Perry does not want to revisit this. Okay, fine. Right. While we're on the phone, Tyler Perry calls her back and says, I will meet with Monique, but not with her husband. Now, you ready for this? Yeah. And then Monique has to apologize publicly to say, Oprah and I had nothing to do with messing up her career. But that'd be a lie. I look in the goddamn camera. <laughs> I thought you, I thought that was a stage the way you. Look in the camera. Yes. Because you heard it. Yes. Right? Yes. So when you have, when you hear what this man is saying. So I said, Stephanie, tell Tyler Perry, never will I meet with him without my husband. And I owe no apology, so I'm not going to give one. That goes away. Kevin Hart. Now, you know when Cat Williams said gatekeepers? Yes. Kevin Hart. Mm -hmm. I do his um, podcast. Yes. And I want y'all to re-listen to the podcast so you can hear it for yourself. When he first comes on, he says, you're like my mother. You're like my aunt. You're like my sister. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then we do the podcast. We speak about the Tyler Perry situation. Oprah Winfrey, he said, I don't really know Oprah, but I'm going to reach out to Tyler. I 
appreciate that. Kevin kept his word. He reached out to Tyler Perry. Kevin Hart called me back about maybe a week or so later. He said, Mo, I talked to Tyler. He said he don't want to revisit it. He said, but I tell you what, let's move past that, Mo. Let's just move past that and let's just do great things. So whatever That's you, what Kevin said. I want you to hear me, Kevin Hart. Let's move past that, Mo. Let's do some great things together. Don't even worry about it. Whatever y'all want to do, I will partner with you. I'll executive produce with you. You just let me know what you want to do. Now, let me say that before we go any further, because okay. I want to make sure I give Kevin Hart his proper credit. When my family was up against the wall, Kevin Hart wrote us a check and said, here you go. We're forever grateful for that. When we were able to give it back, we said, brother, we appreciate you with some interest on top because I don't ever want nobody to think like me and my more. husband. So I want to make sure I put that out there. That, was, that brother really helped us out when we needed to be helped out. Then when he came back with, I got you. I didn't ask Kevin Hart to do anything. He said, I'll executive produce. I'll partner with you. I said, good shit, Kevin, because we're in a deal with Endemol and we're trying to get our talk show back. Mo, whatever it is, I got you. Now, Kevin Hart is one of the biggest entertainers right now in the world. Correct. Right? And was then. We got off the phone with Kevin Hart. We called in the mall immediately and said, Kevin Hart said, whatever we want to do, he got us. He's going to partner executive use. They was like, oh, this is incredible because when you put Kevin Hart name on it, you it's already know what it is. Correct. Two weeks go by. We get a call from in the mall. In the mall says, we just got a call from Kevin Hart's manager, Dave Becky. And Dave Becky said, Kevin doesn't want anything to do with Monique. So whatever she told y'all, he doesn't want to do anything with her, nothing. You know, he doesn't want any any kind of relationship with Monique. So what changed between the two weeks and when, and, and plus he gave you a check, you gave the money back, then said he would partner with you, executive produce, whatever you need, Mo, hey, we got you. So what transpired or what do you think transpired between then, that two that two week period? Well, soon as we got off the phone and they told us what well, Kevin manager David Becky said, I called Kevin Hart immediately. I said, hey, baby, we just got off the phone with Endemol, and they said Dave Becky called them up and said, you don't want anything to do with me. He said, Mo, that's that's a miscommunication. I can tell you right now. I said, wait a minute. Are you OK, though, with this white man calling them up, getting in between our relationship or something? You said he said, Mo, I'm, that's a miscommunication and we're going to talk Tuesday. Don't worry about it. I'm, I'm telling you right now, it's a miscommunication. That was two years ago. If you talk to him, I talk to him. I've never talked back to Kevin Hart again. So that's what we're faced with. When you allow somebody to come in between a relationship with a woman that you said, I'm like your mother. You said, I'm like these things. I didn't ask you for that. So everything that that baby was saying, sitting here, everything he was saying was on the up and up. Because when you hear people say, get the anger out your heart. Oh, man, no one's saying he's lying. No one ever said I was lying. It's so easy to discount and devalue because of what we look like. Right. However, when it comes to Tyler Perry, I will not allow you to discount or devalue because that is your voice on that audio. Mm -hmm. Remember on Good Times mm -hmm. when Penny's mother was whooping up on yep. her and then and she had recorded it. Mm -hmm. That's you on tape. So how does it go from you saying you're going to give me an apology to now I owe you an apology? But what do you owe an apology for? What 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 could I possibly owe you an apology for when you've admitted? See, when Lee Daniel says to me, because Cookie from the, the show Empire, yeah. I was offered that role. Now, Taraji tore it up, baby. Right. It Listen right. here. However, I was offered that. Then Felita called me back and say, baby girl, they said you're too difficult to work with. But you hear on the audio that a man told David Talbert I was difficult to work with. Do you see how that right. cost my family? Yes. And with no accountability because, oh, it's the great Tyler Perry. No, you've got to be accountable for that. Oprah Winfrey, you've got to be accountable for the things you've done with my family. You've got to be accountable for that. Is there any relationship between you and Tyler and you and Oprah currently? No, no. But I thought there was an apology. I, I read what there uh, that I thought I read somewhere that Oprah had issued you an apology and Tyler had issued an apology. That's not correct. No, no. The only person that's given you an apology. You saw it. It's Lee Daniels. That's the only person. So we are in a 
place where we're too afraid to call them for what it is. We're too afraid to say, if it looked like a duck and it quacked like a duck, what is it, Shannon? It's a duck. Right. So, again, you see the struggle of the black woman as I'm sitting here talking to you. And you say, Mova, why would you record him? But you heard the man violate me. The first thing wasn't, I can't believe that cat did that to you. It's, why would you do it? And we understand it. Right. Because we've been conditioned that way. Because when you... You had to get somehow because when you're telling people these are lies, yes. nobody is believing Monique. So now, even though you have him record his voice and that's him and he's saying he made it up now is no longer. Oh, man, I can't believe he lied on Mo. Mo, why'd you record it? So now they put the owners back on you. Where's the win? How do we win? How does a black woman win when you say, here he is right here? And I look to the community and say, how long do we allow us to keep being exploited, used up, taken advantage of? And because we think somebody can give us an opportunity, mm -hmm. we just say, shh, I'm not going to say nothing. If we keep operating like that, Shannon, you're going to have a whole lot of us sitting right here in this same seat, almost telling the same story. Why do you think Tyler is afraid to meet with you and your husband? Why does it need to be you one on one when he meet with other representatives and 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 the cli their client? Why what is it about you that he feels it needs to be just you and he? Does he think your husband is some kind of negative influence on you? He thinks the husband is saying things that that Monique probably wouldn't say if I just had had an opportunity to talk to her one on one. What do you think that is? Let me say <coughs> this. Excuse me. People better be glad my husband is by my side because there are people in Hollywood that know wherever you act up is where I show up. People know in Hollywood, baby, Shannon, and I don't say it with a badge of honor. It's just what it is. Well, I've had to say, who you think you're talking to? And we're sitting there with the president of the studio or the com My patience level is not going to allow. I've been molested. I've been violated. So the moment I see you trying to do it, we're going to have to address it. My husband is nothing but a gentleman. And you know why people have a problem with my husband? Because he's right to it. There's no we're going to dance around the bush. He's right to it. Right. And people like Tyler Perry, people like Oprah Winfrey, they look at my husband and say, how dare you be so direct? Right. How dare you not put your eyes down when you're talking to me? How dare you do that? My husband is also my manager. Why would he want to exclude my right. management? It's like, Tyler, you should want my husband to be there. You, right. you, you may want him to be sitting right there so that way we can have a conversation that everyone can be heard. Mm -hmm. But I appreciate you, Shannon, because most people are too afraid that's heard the tape. They're too afraid to say, no, I heard it, and this is what he said. Mm -hmm. I appreciate T.S. Madison because T.S. Madison was the first one to say, no, I heard what he said. Mm -hmm. So when folks were trying to jump on her, she not down for the black woman. Listen, baby, y'all don't even understand the right. fights that sister be having when ain't nobody watching for the black woman. Right. So I appreciate you looking in that camera. Right. Well, I mean, look, sometimes... There are some some black people, some, not all, some, that my grandpa used to say, Mo, is that if you're not careful, you'll become the very thing you despise the most in a person. Now, what do we despise most about Trump supporters, ex-President Trump, is that no matter what he says, no matter what he does, they give him an out. There's some people in our community, no matter what powerful black people say or do in our community, we'll give them an out. And we can't. And we become the very thing we despise the yes. most. What we despise most about President Trump's, ex-President Trump supporters is that no matter what he does or says, it's okay. Yes. We can't do that. We you can't. can't. We can't. If somebody is wrong, like you said, Mo, if somebody is wrong, we have to be man or woman enough to say they're wrong, regardless of what comes along with that. They don't know. They don't understand what them saying I'm sorry will mean for them. See, when I, I read the Because that's day, not for you. And I'm sorry, it's not for the person that you offended. It's for you. Because currently you're in hostage. Your feelings. Because you have to live with that. 
You got to live with that. What you've done. So when you see a woman say, "Me turning seventy, I'm so happy because I've never hurt anyone." Stop it. Stop it. Because there's a black woman that has been calling your name for over a decade that you seem to want to make go away. And I know I'm not the only one. Would you want, would you sit, if Oprah called Mo today, would you sit down and have a conversation with her? Let me tell you what I'll do if Oprah called me today, Shannon Sharp. We will sit down and have a conversation with Oprah Winfrey. We will sit down and have a conversation with Tyler Perry. We will sit down and have a conversation with the presidents of Lionsgate. We will sit down and have a conversation with anyone that is... Br- I'm going to say brave enough to sit down and have a conversation. But what happens is within seconds, within seconds, if Tyler Perry was to sit right here, you would say, man, I heard you. What you trying to tell me about this sister? Within seconds, Oprah Winfrey would know that people would say, hold up. And I'll go back to Tyler Perry. You know why Tyler Perry don't want to talk to my husband? Because he can't talk around him. My husband don't care nothing about that man's money. We don't care nothing about your title. We care about your character, brother. We care about your integrity. And what you gonna pay? What what you what you gonna pay? How you gonna make it right? How you gonna make it right? Because if I am your Aunt Mary, and I really belong to you, as I really belong to you right now, Shannon, I am your sister. Mm-hmm. And you heard something that was wrong. Yeah. How how can Tyler Perry make it right, Mo? Give you a job? Give you a, uh, uh, your sit? Give you a sitcom? Say, Mo. Okay, you know what, Mo? Sitcom. You're going to be the executive producer. I'm going to be a co-executive producer. You're going to do the sitcom. If somebody cost you, Shannon Sharp, millions of dollars. Yes. Do you want to be compensated for what they cost you for a lie and a rumor? Yeah. So at that time, I was making roughly between two and three million dollars a year. Right. I sat in that for over 12, for over a decade, like 12 years. Right. You do the math. Over a lie that he admitted that he told. Not something I'm making up. Mm-hmm. You admitted that, brother. How do you make that right? You got, I'm sure you got lawyers. Have you uh, had a conversation? Well, what happens is when you take somebody at their word, time, time, time. We don't need to go to no lawyers, Tyler. You know what you did. Just right. make it right. right. And if he doesn't make it right, what will our community do? What will our community say? Because today is me, tomorrow is you. Then what? Yeah. We've got to hold him accountable. What did what 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 cat say? We've got to. You got to tell it's Tyler crazy. Perry. Come on now. You got to do it, Shannon. You got to tell him. You got to tell him. Mo, well, obviously, when you do when, when you do stand up, you go to a lot of different cities, a lot of different clubs. Yes. It's a lot of different promoters. Has everybody always been on the up and up with Monique or did you try? Sometimes people try to take advantage. You're female. You're black. You're heavy. You're not going to say that like Mr. From Color Purple. No! <laughs> You're black. You're ugly. You're not going to do that, shit. <laughs> but, you know, people try to take, people would, would try to take advantage of anyone. But Seemingly like us, their team were willing to take more advantage of I've us. had to tell the promoters, call the police. Because either they're going to come get you or me. They trying to hold up on the money? Call the police. Because, and this was, this was like $75. <laughs> Can you imagine? $75, like, you know where we come from. Yeah. If somebody gets you for $25, that's a problem. Yeah, for sure. Imagine $25 million. Yeah. We've seen people lose their life for twenty five dollars. For sure. Imagine somebody getting you for millions. <coughs> How are you supposed to feel? Would you let it go? Nah, hell no. Nah. Right. So when people say, Mo, just let it go. Yeah, but but it but it's easy for people to say let it go when they haven't lost anything. Come on, baby. It's easy to say. Come on. But when you've lost how do you, it's kind of like, it's kind of like, you know, hey, someone should just get over it. You should, you can't tell somebody how to grieve, how long to grieve, because you're not the one that's hurting. They didn't do it to you. They didn't do it to you. They it did. was done. And, and I will say this right now on your show. I still love y'all. We still love y'all. You love more, they make it, make it right. My husband. Okay, say that again because you I love y'all more. Y'all make it right. Yes, indeed. Okay, I fix him a pound cake. <laughs> my, my husband would always say, "Mama, we ain't calling nobody out. We calling them up." 
And if we continue to call us up on our doings that are not right, we get better as a people. Like we get better. Do you know why things were able to happen like they happened on the color purple? Why you Oh, you talking about the rebate? You talking about what? I'm talking re- about the seventh one. Yeah. The one that just came out. Right. Right. And that the seventh edition? <coughs> It's like the musical with Fantasia and, and, and Taraji, right? Right, okay. right, right, yeah. right, right. That that one with all our beautiful sisters. Yes. You know why they're able to treat us like they treat us? How are you handpicked and you audition? No, if you handpicked, you don't audition. I want you to say that again, Shannon, because people don't understand how deep this goes. When I watch my sister say it was an honor to be handpicked. Right. Then why ever would you audition? Yeah. And the moment, in my opinion, the moment she auditioned, they knew we got them. We can treat them any kind of way we want to treat them. We can do them any kind of way. But why would you want to? Why? Just because you can, that doesn't mean you should. But they did. But they did. How do you handpick me? And then mistreat me. Yes. And then I got to send a letter to you about the mistreatment that you gave me. That's why they're able to get away with it. That's why when I do interviews, oftentimes, or these conversations, people are too afraid to even address it. Because they don't want to be caught up like, oh, I don't I don't know. I, I, I. When you say, wait a minute, no, that's the truth. Right. I heard it. And I don't want my character to be on the line as I'm being a person sitting there asking people about their lives right. and then not be able to stand in what I've heard. Right. That's why it made so much. Of, uh, it was important for us. It was important for us to get you that audio. I don't want you to take my word. Yeah. And anything I've said on this couch right now that don't take my word. Ask those people. Ask those people right. and see what happens. And then maybe after this come out, they, they're going to label me again. She's bitter. She's not loving. Yeah, yeah. You done stole, you done got 30, 40 million of my dollars. Yeah, I'm bitter. She, she, Most, the average t- person going to be bitter. <laughs> okay, I just want to look on your camera. Okay. And, and here's the thing. Because I got a king at home, I'm not bitter. I'm not bitter. You just want what's right. We just determined. Right. Not Life is too good to be bitter. But we're determined for you to take accountability. Right. That's all. I was very young when I had my first son. I didn't want him to have to go to a college because that was all that my parents could afford. I wanted him to be able to do whatever he wanted to do. And there was a sacrifice in that. Right? Mm -hmm. Because when you're trying to go get it, you're missing this right here. Oh, you miss a lot. The nurturing. Yes. You miss all of that. Yes. So, you know, all of that had to be dealt with. Mm -hmm. So now with this group, with my second set of children... Mm -hmm. I'm a different mother than mm-hmm. I was mm-hmm. then. So my whole thing is even right now, we want to make sure that when we leave here, our babies are good. Right. And their babies are good. And had Tyler Perry not told that lie, we would be on our way to that. And I know people saying, why she keep going back to that? I'm going to keep going back to that shit Shannon Sharp till he takes accountability right. for it. Now we go to the Hoodie Awards. Tyler Perry is there. Okay. Mm -hmm. Tyler Perry calls me in his room. Now, when I go into Tyler Perry's room, his staff is in there. Now, you ready to holler laughing? Yes. Okay. I take my security in there with me because I always want to have somebody with me. Right. Right. Tyler Perry does this. And the people scattered. They all left out the room. I said, look at this shit right here. You saw me. And they all scattered. That wasn't the light. That's for the people. You know, light clap, lights on. Lights off because they got their asses up okay, out of there. Okay, 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 okay. So at the time, my security looked at me. I said, you don't work for Tyler Perry. You could. Touche. So Tyler Perry says to me, listen, Monique, we really need you to, you know, promote this film because if you get nominated for the Oscar, your next movie is going to be three to five million dollars. If you win it, your next movie is six to eight million dollars. I said, Tyler Perry, who you talking to? I'm a black woman. When they gonna pay that kind of money? No, I'm telling you, that's what it is. And, and and if you just go and promote it, I said, listen, brother, you can pay me to promote it. Because at the time, now him and Oprah are producers on the film. Right. I said, you can pay me to do it. I don't care where the check come from, but y'all just gotta I, pay I me to do money. it. 
He said, I'm not in the habit of giving out money for free. I said, and I'm not in the habit of working for free. But you gave T.D. Jakes a check for a million dollars. But that's another story, and I'm back. Mm -hmm. So when he then says that, it's like, listen, we both mutually agree. You don't give out free money. I don't work for free. free. We hugged, Shannon. When we were done talking, we hugged. Do you hear me? Yes. We hugged like brother and sister. Like, it's cool. He understands. Right. Okay? Okay. Oprah Winfrey calls my husband. I want y'all to take your time because I'm getting ready to go in. Yeah, you, that's your camera right there. Yeah, because the people at home, they sitting there like, Moni, what happened? Bitch, I'm getting ready to tell you. <laughs> she calls my husband. Okay. My husband explains to her what's going on. She says, there have been times I've had to draw the line in the sand. So my husband said, well, what is different between you and Monique? You've got to draw the line in your sand when you know they're asking you for too much. She said, you're absolutely right. And I understand your position. You're right in the position you're taking. So when you're looking at me saying, well, what happened? I'm telling you what happened. But, okay. She's saying that privately, but did she voice that publicly? Did you hear her say it? I did. Did you hear her say it? JT, did you hear her say it? No. Zach, did you hear her say it, Zach? Regina, did you hear her? Tommy, no one seemed to hear that publicly. She said that privately. Now, when she said that, see, everything we're saying to you, it can be proven. She had him on speakerphone. And that when she was talking to him mm-hmm. in that room was a man named Reggie Wells, who just passed, who used to be Oprah Winfrey's makeup artist, mm-hmm. who he had a conversation with me and my husband. Now, for you babies, that's good with the little Internet. We had a, a show on called Monique and Sydney Finding a Way to Be Unoffended. Finding a way to be unoffended. Reggie Wells is on that show speaking about Oprah Winfrey. Reggie Wells said, Monique, I was there that day. He said, and when y'all got off the phone, he look, I looked at her and said, why don't you just pay this woman the money? She deserves it. And she looked at him and said, I won't be paying her nothing. And he said, that's not right. And you know it's not right. Now, that man shared that on that show. So I'm not saying nothing that hasn't been shared. So you have people that will say things in private, but won't do it publicly. I'm the person that I will say it in private and I'm going to say it publicly because that's the only way we make it right. But you don't need somebody to talk good to your face. You need somebody to talk good behind your back. So if you telling me, if you telling me what a great person I am in my face, but you telling me I'm dog poop behind my back, what good is that, Mo? What does that make those kind of people, Shannon? That's... What does it make those kind of people? That's cowardly. That is cowardly. See, here's what's this. When we have our juggernauts, Oprah Winfrey, Tyler Perry, Steve Harvey, Kevin Hart. These are our juggernauts of our community. These are the people that our babies say, when I grow up, I want to be that. I want to be like that. So we have to call those people to the mat and say, listen, what are you teaching our babies? You're feeding poison because you're showing them your private jet. I'm going to show you my mansion. I'm going to show you my fancy cars. But my character is shot and I'm bankrupt. I got a lot of money in my bank. It's more zeros than some of them can, than we can imagine. But their character, they are bankrupt. Those are bankrupt people. So everybody that Kat sat right here and told you about, I can't wait to see your next interviews with those people. They ain't coming on now, Mo. Invite them. I have. They not going to do it. Well, look, I've already done Steve. I have a relationship with Steve. He, do him again. Do him again. And I'm going to say this. I'm trying to get Oprah and, uh, and Tyler, though. Baby, we got him. Y'all, come on. Stop playing. They ain't coming on, Mo. Thanks to you. You know how. And I don't want to put you on a spot, but I'm going to say it. because <laughs> I appreciate you as a black man and what you're doing. Thank you. If you are my friend Mm -hmm. and someone says to me, Monique Shannon Sharp wronged me. And you my friend? Yeah. I'm going to call my friend. You can come to me. And I'm going to say, hey, is what they saying true? And if you get to him and and Han, I'm going to tell you, till you fix it, you and I can't talk. Because if you'll do them that way, you do It'll be a matter of time before you do it to me. So if Steve Harvey is your friend, mm-hmm. you call your friend up and you ask him, is what our sister saying right, man? Because if it is, we can't do that to her. 
if that's our sister. See, it took a transgender named T.S. Madison. It was a guy named Jamaica Carter. We, Jamaica Carter and our mutual friend. Jamaica Carter and our friends. Mm -hmm. T.S. Madison was a mutual friend. Mm -hmm. So Jamaica called me and said, would you mind doing T.S. Madison's show? I go do T.S. Madison's show. When I tell T.S. Madison when the camera cuts, I said, listen, your friend is wrong. She said, Monique Lee Daniels is my friend. I said, then you need to call your friend and tell him to fix this shit. She said, I will. Within a couple of days, who did I get a call from? Lee Daniels. See, that's a friend. Mm -hmm. That's a true friend that's saying, I love you so much that I want to make sure that's not on your heart or your conscience. Let's fix it. Let's make it right. So when people ask Lee now, when we did the deliverance together, how was it to work with Monique? It was as if we had never parted ways because he fixed it. He owned it and he took accountability for it. I can't now keep you to the cross because you've owned it. Right. I've had to be forgiven. Right. So I appreciate mm -hmm. the, that someone had grace and mercy with me. So I'm going to have that with other people when they take accountability for what they've done. How much did you make for the role, Mary and Precious? I was paid $50,000. That's it? That's it. And I never complained because that's what I signed up for. It was an independent film. Mm -hmm. right? right? So when my friend called me, and I'm going to quote him, he said, bitch, this one right here, right <laughs> here. He said, this shit is crazy. By the time I got to page 10, I called him back. I said, what the hell is this, Lee? He said, bitch, I know. He said, it's sick. After my husband and I read that script, he said, Mama, if you play this with no judgment, when he say action, don't judge the character, just become it. This is an award winning. Yes. This is award winning. So with all of that being said, I never complained about the $50,000. I did everything I was supposed to do. No, nothing. It is when they started asking me to become a slave. It is when Tyler Perry and Oprah Winfrey started asking me to work for free. It is when they started doing the bidding for whomever the gatekeeper was at the time to say, we can get her. Remember the scene in Sparkle? You ever seen Sparkle with Irene Carroll yeah, and I Philip Michael they, Thomas? Yeah. Remember when they was in the car because the Jew man was trying to get him to sign over that contract? Mm -hmm. And he kept shaking his head like, you will not get me to turn my back on this woman. Right. That's what this is. We ain't turning our back. My husband ain't turning his back. He ain't signing up for something he know ain't right. right. And people have a problem with that. And we got to keep speaking on it, Shannon, because the next one's coming for real. I would hate for you to have to sit another sister in this chair mm -hmm. and she tell you the same story. So considering you won the Oscar, normally when you win the Oscar, not saying you're going to win another or get Oscar worthy uh, 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 scripts, but there's normally a, a run where you in, you know, two, three films. Now, Monique, that 50,000 is 500 or a million or two million. You feel, feel that you were blackballed from that point and Monique did not make the money what she should have been compensated for future roles. Let's tie it all back in. Okay. Okay. You have a man that says, I lied on you. <coughs> yes. I put a rumor out there on yeah. you. Yeah. And I said I was going to apologize. But then you have another man that comes back when I'm offered Empire and says, Mo, they said you're difficult to work with. You're going to be a problem. Where would they get that from? Well, somebody that's as powerful as, as Tyler. Okay. So now I'm scratched from that. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Now when it comes to movies, I'm a difficult person to work with. Ain't nobody ever had a problem with me. They you never know? said, did they say, did anybody say that prior to pressure? Yes. No, not prior to pressure. Right. I've never had a problem with nobody. As long as I was saying, yes, you good. The moment you start challenging, we got a problem. What about the Parker? What about Moesha? Had anybody said anything prior about Monique's character? prior to pre her not wanting to do international press, what she wasn't contractually obligated to do. Never. Prior to that, nobody said anything. Never. I read that you said, you read, you, this is a chapter of forgiveness. That's your thing, a chapter of I forgiveness. I didn't say that. That's what the guy at Hollywood Reporter said. <laughs> okay, don't put words in that my mouth. That's not what I said. That's what his ass okay, said. Okay, what did you say? Okay, okay. That's what he said. Listen. What would it take, Mo? Mo, what would it take for Mo Neat to forgive Oprah and Tyler Perry? 
Be accountable. Be accountable. And for you Tyler want Perry, Tyler Perry to say what he said on that tape, you want him to say that publicly. And he cost my family millions. And you want so to when, be compensated. Yes. I want to be very clear about that. If someone costs you millions, do you want that back? Absolutely. So I'm no different than you. Right. Especially when I've done nothing wrong. Right. Especially when you've admitted that you've lied. Okay. Especially when you've admitted that you started a rumor. Yes. You need to compensate me and my family. For Oprah. For Oprah Winfrey. You owe me an apology. See, Shannon, Oprah and I had a private conversation about our mothers. Mm -hmm. This is the part people don't know. Right. I shared with that woman what me and my mother were going through. Now, my mother's no longer here. Mm -hmm. Right? Right. And I shared with Oprah Winfrey what we were going through and how I felt. And I was, you know, you, you trying to balance it out because it's your mother. Your and mom. I shared that with you. And I shared with her my family and what the dynamic was. And you don't tell me you're going to have my God darn parents. I was getting ready to say, God damn, baby, it was right there. But you don't tell me you can already have my mother and my father on your show. And you think that that's just okay? And the way you try to apologize in front of a group of women, if you think I've done anything wrong, no, 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 no. you're going to stop that. Right. I am very proud of what you've accomplished in your life. Mm -hmm. We respect everybody, right. but we over-respect no one. And Oprah Winfrey walks around like, I can't be checked. I, no, I won't admit to I, that I, I'm wrong. I'm, I'm a firm believer, Mo. No one is beyond reproach. No one at all. So when you keep saying, what is it? I'm going to keep answering you the same exact way. Right. So if you talk to your camera, I'm going to talk to my camera and see how they split the screen. And we're going to invite them at the same time. You talk to them first. Okay. Uh, Tyler, Oprah, I would greatly appreciate it if you two guys would come on Club Shay Shay. We sit down. We have a conversation. This is not an interview. This is not hard hitting. I want you to tell your truth. Miss Oprah, uh, Tyler, tell your truth and we can get to the bottom of this because, hey, we got an icon here sitting on this couch and she's hurting. Oprah and Tyler, I want to say I appreciate my brother Shannon Shaw for saying what he just said. And I want to clear something up. I'm not hurt personally. I'm hurt for our community. I'm hurt that y'all would allow yourselves to sit in something that you know that you've done wrong and not say anything. That helps us not. So Brother Shay Shay have said, y'all come on on the sofa. Oprah, this liquor is good. Okay, and I understand you like cranberry and vodka. Okay, Roosevelt Cartwright told me, you drink that you like. And you know, he told me some other things with the drink that you like. Come on, on Uncle Shay Shay. Let's have a conversation. And not, well, you took yours all the way down and I cannot. Okay. Ooh. Okay, I cannot. I cannot do that. You, you, you already did a good, you did a good Thank job. Thank you, sugar. Appreciate now, that. when we get ready to wrap up, I'm going to give you an exclusive on something that don't nobody know. Ooh. Okay? Don't nobody know this, and I, it's going to be something. It's going to be something. It's going to be something. Want to join Club Shay Shay? Become an official member by hitting that subscribe button, where you never know who's going to be joining us for drinks and conversation. Don't be late to the party, because you know we like to do something before two something.